speaking of throwing a little bit of that in, do we uh, often get the question, do we pre-inoculate everything that we have in our mixes? So how do we handle inoculant? Yeah, that's always a good question. Um, we, we, we do pre-inoculate some things, other things we're hesitant to do that on. A lot of that depends on number one, what it is, and number two, how long it's going to be before you plant. So there's, there's quite a spectrum of how viable inoculants are, all the way from like our clovers and alfalfa that we inoculate. That inoculant, it's, it's, it's encapsulated in clay. That stuff's good for 18 months on the seed. That's what the label says, very long lasting. So we, we are, you know, we're pre-coating that and, and it's not really a coating, it's just a dry powder, but it's clay based. And so that stuff lasts for a long, long time. The other end of that extreme is the pea lentil vetch bacteria. It is it is very wimpy. It does not last very long, and so uh, we're we're more hesitant to put that on the seed if you're telling us it's going to be uh, very long before you get it in the ground. Uh, we do have some products that have some extenders in it that will extend the life of that pea lentil vetch bacteria, and so we can stretch that out a little bit longer. Uh, the cow pea type is a little more hardy than the pea lentil vetch, and then the soybean rhizobia uh, are very hardy. Yeah, they'll they'll last for several weeks on the seed. So, um, so it kind of depends again on what you're doing, uh, how long it's going to be. If it's the cool part of the year, they'll last much longer than if it's the hot part of the year. And so, we'll try to work with the customer and find out if we know that it's going to be several weeks before they plant we'll really encourage them to not mix it in, uh, but to ship it on the side. And then sometimes what I'll do, uh, you know, to kind of, you know, play both sides of it a little bit, we'll mix some in because the, the inoculants that have the extenders in them also cost more. And so I'll maybe mix in a partial rate of that and then send some of the cheaper stuff still sealed up in the bag along with the seed and have the customer put that on as they're going into the drill. And so there's some that's mixed in and there's some that's not. So you kind of get the best of both worlds there a little bit. Uh, so that kind of covers the rhizobia. Dale, why don't you talk a little bit about the Biazo and the mycorrhiza because they're, they're a little bit different okay. products and maybe even the, the hypergrow compost extract too. Sure. Um, the uh, the Biazo is, is, is a blend of Azotobacter and Azospirillum, which are free living nitrogen fixers. They can fix nitrogen on the roots of sorghum, corn, millets, uh, basically just about any plant uh, that has root exudates, which is, I believe, all of them. Just about all, yeah. Can, can feed uh, Azospirillum and Azotobacter, but it, it really thrives on warm season grasses because those are really high root exudate producing organisms or uh, plants that can nourish these organisms. Um, they don't fix a lot of nitrogen, but uh, in a grass legume mix where you're not putting nitrogen fertilizer out there, every little additional bit counts. Uh, it's something I, I really have seen some, some good results from. Um, longevity on seed of the Biazo, um, label says about 30 days. It's, it's more hardy than most of our rhizobium bacteria, you know, that our peat-based type rhizobium, which, you know, might last, you know, a week, depending on the organism. Um, Biazo is definitely hardier than that. But again, it's, it's a living organism. As soon as we break the bag, it starts dying. So uh, even, even though it's hardier than, than the rhizobium bacteria, uh, we still want to see you get it in the ground on fairly timely manner. Um, the mycorrhizal fungi, on the other hand, uh, those spores, I mean, they have a hard capsule on them. They are very persistent. They can last a couple of years on the seed uh, with basically no loss of viability. And then they'll lose about 10% viability every year after that. Um, first mycorrhizal fungi I ever inoculated with was five-year-old product and it worked fantastic and I, um, I mean if if it hadn't worked I wouldn't be pitching it now today that's what started my whole journey is someone gave me some stuff for free because it was expired and anybody that knows me knows I'm one of the, the biggest cheapskates on the planet 
and uh, that is true. Free speaks to me, <laughs> and um, so yeah, um, so yeah, I'll try it if it's free. I I know a lot about mycorrhizal fungi, but I I didn't want to pay for it, and I'm I'm sure glad I got that material uh, because it, it was very impressive, and boom, I mean, results within. 30, 60 days, there was just a noticeable difference. So mycorrhizal fungi is very, very uh, durable. It, it, unlike rhizobium, you know, Keith was talking about temperature. Um, ultraviolet light kills rhizobium. Temperatures over about 110, 120 degrees kill rhizobium. And, and you know, so they're pretty fragile. Mycorrhizal fungi, on the other hand, those spores can take up to 140 degrees. Um, they can take direct sunlight. They can even take fertilizer contact. You can mix it with fertilizer, uh, which is and another weird thing. You can actually mix it with fungicide, and it won't kill those spores because it doesn't penetrate that shell. Um, not advisable, but it can handle it. So um, the mycorrhizal fungi, you can spread it on the soil surface. It can sit there in the sun for a year and you catch a rain, work it in the ground, it's still good. So it's uh, uh, mycorrhizal fungi, they're tough. Tough product, yeah. Okay. 